Welcome to the What to Watch video update. This is a video that for right now appears to be once a week, but technically I designed this video so that it's updated on an as needed basis. However, every time I've been doing the video, I've only needed to do it one time each week. So I'll at least do this video once a week and then on an as needed basis if the need should dictate. The market is at a very critical point right now. We are seeing major convergence points, not only in the S&P, but pretty much across the market, except for the small caps, coming together, which if it's positive, this could provide support and we could bounce up out of that. If we break below these levels that we're at right now, that could turn things much more negative. We're coming into a weekend that is full of geopolitical concerns. Right before I started recording, it looks like things have calmed down a little bit between Iran and Israel, where I Israel was able to protect itself, but that could escalate again at any time. That was causing some concerns in the market. Apparently, the market was quite rattled over this. The Jews have existed for 4,000 years now, and they were worried they weren't going to make it through the weekend. Okay, that's supposed to be funny. Anyway, getting back to the market. We have a lot of things coming together across the market that I'll go through. As I usually do with this video, I have some positive things and I have some negative things. Right now, the convergences that I'm seeing, unless they've turned more decisively negative, I've kept them on the positive side. Now, they could easily switch over to the negative side if we see further weakness. So first, looking at the positive side, the markets are still anticipating rate cuts to be slow. Now, there is some doubt coming into the market that maybe the Fed won't even be able to cut rates in 2024. At the beginning of 2024, there were six, maybe seven potential rate cuts. Then it got whittled down, and we were thinking maybe there will be three. Now, there's even wondering if there are going to be any. And that's because we're seeing stronger than expected economic reports that have been coming out that has thrown this whole Goldilocks scenario really into question right now. And so we'll just take it day by day like we usually do and then evaluate things as they develop. There are multiple convergences occurring simultaneously. And for right now, I'm putting this on the positive side because we are, we're above these levels and we're coming down. And so far, we've not broken below them. For example, and I'll show you charts of all of these things. The S2 level at 5110 that's on the intraday chart from last Friday that level held, okay? May not seem all that important by itself, but it lines up with a bunch of other things we're seeing right now. The S&P 500 is at its 50-day simple moving average. It's come down to that level. This is a really important moving average that a lot of people really focus on. The S&P is still above the long-term resistance at 51.10 to 51.11. Do you notice that the number here, 51.10, is the same as S2 level for Friday session. And that's also the 50 period moving average. These are all coming together. And this is just in the S&P. But the trends for the S&P are still positive. The S&P is at its 10 week moving average. Now 10 weeks, you multiply that by four, that roughly works out to a 40 day moving average. And then we have a lot of other indexes that are right at these critical levels. The mega caps, the NYSE, the Wilshire 5000, both the NYSE and Wilshire, they are broad measure markets. And also the total stock market ETF, that is about a, that's about as broad as you can get. The FANG index, the tech sector, the semiconductors, all stocks, which looks at U.S. stocks as well as international stocks, high leverage loans. This, If the economy was getting ready to fall apart, this chart should be falling apart, and it's not. And the weekly chart on the financials. Now, we've turned more negative on the Dow and the financials, and I'll get to that later. The growth to value ratios for right now are holding up. That's what we're waiting to see. The market had developed in 2023 this idea that inflation was a problem, interest rates were a problem, and if we saw any strength coming into the market, we watched the growth to value ratios. Then last October, they developed this scenario that the Fed's going to come in and cut rates, that we're not going to go into a recession, and everything is going to be fine. Then it's like the market really didn't care, and then values started to do better, 
And interest rates even kept going up during that time. But the market wasn't really worried about that then because they thought, well, we're still in a pretty friendly environment. Then right at the beginning of 2024, that was thrown into question. So we went back to what we were doing previously in 2023, looking at growth of value and worried about inflation and interest rates. Well, then we started to develop the Goldilocks scenario again. Once the Fed met at their last meeting and the markets liked what was said in the press conference and what was projected in the report that they released, that there could be three rate cuts in 2024. And then we even had a, a nice core PCE report come out. That was on Good Friday. And Jerome Powell gave a speech that same day. And that seemed to confirm everything. And so we were going over to this area in the market or this scenario where it's okay for commodities to go up. It's okay for interest rates to go up. Growth stocks can still go up. It's looking like interest rates are coming down and the market was just taking off. Well, then in February, we had a CPI report come out that was much stronger than expected, completely caught the market off guard. Then we had a PPI report come out. Then just this past week, we had CPI come out again, and it's also was it was also stronger than expected. That's throwing a lot of doubt into this whole thing. And so the market is really at a point right now where if you have been taught or if you practice buy the dips, this is as dippy as it gets right now. This is why I don't buy the dips because there's, yeah, the market could bounce up off of here and everybody looks like a genius. But if we fall below this, things are going to turn negative and they're probably going to turn negative quickly and with some intensity. Also, the QQQs of the NASDAQ 100, they're still above their long-term resistance. That's positive. And our ratios are still holding up. And I'll show you charts of all of these things. This is the chart that I've been talking about where the market has adapted this idea or adopted, I guess you should say, the idea that the the Fed, if they do start cutting rates, it'll be slow because it'll be adjusting to what's happening in the economy. And the market really liked that. And stocks tend to do better in that kind of an environment. Now that we're getting stronger than expected economic reports and employment is still staying strong, that's being thrown into doubt. And we're wondering, are we going to adopt one of these other scenarios that tends to be more negative? This is the intraday chart. And if you don't watch my daily videos, you're not used to seeing this chart. Each one of these bars is 10 minutes long. If it's up, it's green. If it's down, it's red. This is Friday. That's what I want to hone in on. If you see this, it's probably really hard to see, but there's a level here called S2. The cool thing about this is just like on the daily and weekly charts that we look at, these pivot points are calculated before the market even opens. So we know they're there ahead of time. We came right down to this S2 level, which happens to be at 51.10. We came down there. We bounced up off of that. We came down again. So it's like, you know, tested it once, tested it twice, just like Santa Claus, you know, checking his list. And then we were able to bounce up off of that. Can we stay above this level? Now, this is intraday. You're going to see this same level come up again. Here is a daily chart. We're right down to the 50 period moving average. Now, we bounced up a little bit off of that. But this support level is holding right now. This is a major moving average that a lot of people focus on. Then we look at the 50 period moving average itself. <clears throat> We're coming down to the red line, which is the simple moving average. That's what most people tend to use. There's another kind of moving average, which you see here in blue, called an exponential moving average, which you would think it might give you more of an advantage since it tends to move faster. But the studies that I've read and some research that I've done myself suggest that the simple moving averages are actually better because they don't move as fast. And so you're not jumping the gun as often, but there's always exceptions to that. We're coming right down to this level. That, and that's lining up with what we're seeing on the intraday chart. Then here's a weekly chart. We're right at this R1 level, also lining up at that same point. So we're seeing intraday, daily, and weekly all lining up for the S&P. I've been talking about this R1 level for months. And we went above it, and now we're coming back down and testing it. If we can bounce up off of that, that's going to turn things back more positive. Now, this may not all get solved in Monday session. This is a weekly chart. And we have to have the whole week over before a new bar is completed on this chart. So just because 
things are looking better. We're going to have to watch this as it's going on. Now, if we just skyrocket up and kind of clear the air, so to speak, that might help things. Also, if we go down below it, that doesn't necessarily mean the end of the world. It's where do we close on a daily basis? And then ultimately, where are we going to close a week from now with these charts? Why are these important? For those of you that haven't heard about these before, these pivots are drawn on the chart before this time period even happens. We were coming up in 2021 and we hit a high right at this pivot point. And this pivot point lasts for the whole month. That took us into 2022, which was a very difficult year. We finally bottomed in October of 2022. We came up, we hit another pivot point here. Then we spent a number of months going down before we bottomed in October 2023. We've come up, we actually danced around this point for quite a while. We went above, we came up, came back down. We finally broke above it, came back down. Now we were able to break above it. Well, this is now being tested. And we're going to have to see if the market is really positive, this test will be successful and we'll go back up. If things are turning more negative, this test will ultimately fail and we're going to go down. We're also looking at the long-term trend. This continues to be positive with the blue moving average, which is a 13-week moving average. This is a weekly chart and a 50-week moving average. And we're coming down close to this moving average as well. It's also lining up. Now, we look at a longer-term chart. This is very long-term. But this is a 10-week moving average. This is what I usually look at when we're really going down. These are This is like the ultimate long-term trend. This is like a 200-week moving average. Well, we're coming down to this moving average as well for the S&P 500. The mega caps, these are the stocks that have really led the market higher. Guess what they're doing? They're coming down to their 50-day moving average on the daily charts. The NYSE is down to its 50-day moving average. Excuse me, this is a weekly chart. It's coming down to its 13-week moving average here. This is a broad market measure. So it's not just confined to the S&P. We're seeing it across the market as well. And I meant to put this one first. This is a daily chart where we are coming down to the 50-day moving average. So those two, these two charts were reversed. The Wilshire, another broad market index. We're coming down to the 50-day moving average and closing right about on that. Another broad market measure. Total stocks, very broad mar market measure here, coming down to the 50-day moving average. The FANG index, we're still above the moving average because this area has been holding up a little better. Later on in the week, especially on Friday, when the stock market really went down, the bigger stocks, which includes FANG, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, and a bunch of others. There's probably NVIDIA in here somewhere too. They held up better. They were down and they got hit, but they didn't get hit as hard as the rest of the market did. So we're still a little bit above this moving average. The tech sector, a little bit below its 50-day moving average. So that might lean that a little more negative. I'm still keeping it positive for right now. Semiconductors coming down to their 50-day moving average. All stocks, looking at U.S. stocks and international stocks, this is a daily chart coming down to the 50-day moving average. High leverage loans, not quite down to the 50-day moving average, but still staying fairly positive for right now. This is, the, this is an ETF that's made up of very risky loans. And the people that invest in this are not stupid. If the, if the economy was getting ready to fall apart and people were going to start defaulting on these high risky loans, you think they'd be buying into this ETF? No, they're buying into this ETF because it's making money and they're not worried about what's going on in the economy right now. Now, I'm not saying they're always right, but they've been taking this stance for a long time and they've been correct to this point. The QQQs coming down to its 50-day moving average. This is the ETF for the NASDAQ 100. Here is the NASDAQ, just a little bit above its 50-day moving average. And the NASDAQ weekly chart is coming down close to its 13-week moving average. Here's the NASDAQ 100 at its 50-day moving average. The weekly chart coming down to its 13-week moving average. The mid-caps, a little bit below the moving average. This is the 50-day moving average on the daily chart. So that could lean a little bit more negative. We're mainly kind of focusing on the large caps here. I don't even have any small cap stuff in this video. They're kind of irrelevant for what's happening right now. The mid caps also on a weekly chart coming down to this longer term moving average. Then this is what's probably going to make or break this development here. 
it's going to be is the smart money, which we've been below average for the last three weeks going into before Easter. We've had a couple Fridays session was about at average. We had a down day a week ago that was above average volume. But other than that, we have been below average <clears throat> with volume. The smart money is going to have to come back in and do a lot of buying and really push prices higher. They're going to have to see what we're seeing right now, which they do, and say, okay, this is a good spot to buy. We're feeling pretty good about things. And we're going to need to see this accumulation distribution turn up. Now, this is supposed to be a smart money indicator. It also takes volume into account. So if we see upward moves on an increase in volume, that's going to turn this more above its moving average. Right now, it's on top of the moving average, so it's indecisive. Now, we're also keeping an eye on growth to value and I have a number of different ways of looking at that. We have the blue line here, which is an intraday chart of large cap growth. And that's way up here. I shouldn't say way up, but when you look at the red line, yeah, it's way up. This is value where growth is holding up better on an intraday basis when you compare it to value. If we're going back to the scenario where interest rates might be a problem, inflation might not be under control, which it looks like we're heading back that way, we want to see if the blue line is above the red line, that's more positive for the market. If the red line comes back and goes above the blue line, then that's that tends to be more negative. We're also seeing some improvement here with S&P growth to value, looking at a ratio. This has been going up and pretty much holding on to its gains that it saw over the past few trading sessions. So this is looking more encouraging for the moment. Then we look at small cap growth of value where it had come down, but it was starting to come back up. It ticked down a bit in, in Friday on Friday, but not all that much. And mid cap growth is still in a longer term uptrend. It has been pulling back. It did come down on Friday, but it's been holding up to this point. Then we look at S&P growth of value on an end of day basis where we had been falling back. Now we're starting to show a bit of an improvement and we're also in an uptrend, even though we ticked down a bit on Friday. Then just to look at growth all by itself, this is a pure growth index. I usually show this in the intermarket analysis video. See how we're coming right down to the 50-day moving average? My goodness. Now, this could also be taken as positive because value, which if we're going back to that other scenario, we want value to do worse than growth, unless you're invested in it, of course. It's actually dropping further below the moving average. Hasn't turned full-blown negative yet, but it's showing a little bit more weakness. Now, to change it a little bit, this is a weekly chart of a NASDAQ 100 going back to 2009, where even though we've been declining, we're still above this long-term upward trend line. This is another one that the bear, perma bears have been just salivating over because they were so sure we were going to come up to this level and then just tank after that. Look at what we're doing now. We're actually going up. Now, the NASDAQ 100, NDX, that's growth compared to the Dow, which is considered more value or the, the best stocks there are supposed to be, we're seeing this going up. That means the NASDAQ 100 is outperforming. Now, they both have been under pressure, but the Dow's been under more pressure. So that's causing this ratio to go up above previous levels from what we've seen before. So this is not falling apart yet. If anything, it's still remaining more positive. This is a similar look here where we take the QQQs, again, the NASDAQ 100, and compare it to the small caps. It's not that the QQQs did great. It's that the small caps are falling apart and we're coming back up to this high reading that we were seeing before. That's also longer term positive for right now. Now we go over to the negative side. Sentiment is now falling after being extreme positive, And I'll show you that chart. The point and figure chart, it hasn't changed yet. If you watched any of these previous videos, we're still looking at a lot of X's and no O's yet. And I'll show you that chart too. The S&P has dropped below its 20 period moving averages. So the short term trend for the S&P, it's down, it's negative. We're leaning more towards negative for the intermediate term trend. And that's the 50 period moving average. Now, if we can bounce up off of that and see some of our other indicators start to turn more positive, we could get that back. But if we fall below those 50 period moving averages, it's going to turn those indicators even more negative and things are, are going to just turn more negative. That's all I can say there. The chicken money flow is negative right now. This is another smart money indicator also based on volume. When we look at our 20, 50, 100 and 200 
moving average studies, these are stocks inside the S&P 500 and their various moving averages. They're showing weakness because they've seen pullbacks this last week. The parabolic SAR chart. Now, a week ago in this video, I told you the daily chart went negative. Now we have the weekly chart negative and I put great importance on this indicator. So the fact that this turned negative both on the daily and now it's being confirmed on the weekly chart, that is quite negative. The market's really gonna have to overcome some things to turn that back positive. Discretionary to staples, that ratio that we look at, it's not going up, but it's not really going down. It's pretty much going sideways. And the Dow and financials are showing greater weakness. We saw that especially later on in the week, in Friday's session. And then the dollar has been going up, which the market likes, stock market likes to have a weaker dollar. It makes the conversion rate more friendly. It makes it more friendly for imports and export things. And the official stance of the U.S. government is that they like a strong U.S. dollar. The unofficial stance of the U.S. government is they like a weak dollar. It just appears to be more advantageous. All right, here's some charts. This is the fear and greed index. We had been up above the 75 level for quite a while, which was showing good momentum. But folks were getting a little too happy. Then we started to trail off, and this is coming down. So the context of this is that we're declining. After we get extreme, that's when we look at using this as a contrarian indicator. We finally started to break down. So we ride with this until proven otherwise, which means we're going down with this. That's why the short-term trend is negative. We're waiting to see if the intermediate-term trend is going to shift. Here's the point and figure chart. Still showing an awful lot of X's here and no O's. The X is drawn in whenever price goes up by a certain amount. O's are drawn when we fall by a certain amount. We're still getting a long, tall up that was generated way back on March 7th. And we're also seeing the same warning. I don't have the chart here on the weekly version of the point and figure chart. We have dropped below the 20 period moving averages. So the short term trend is now negative. This had been holding up for quite a while as we were really going up. We have now broken below that. Here's the chicken money flow. It was going down as the S&P was going up, creating a negative divergence. It's gone negative. Now it's still negative, but it's pretty much going sideways. There's not an awful lot of strength here. Are we gonna be able to turn and go back up and actually get positive with this? Or are we gonna see more weakness after this? These are the questions we need to ask right now. Then looking at those stocks inside the S&P and their 20 period moving averages, we're getting extreme negative. Now we could still drop more than this, but a lot of times when we get to this kind of a reading, we tend to see some kind of a bounce come out of that, but it, it may happen on Monday. It may not happen for a few trading days. We're also seeing weakness and dropping below 50 with those stocks above their 50 day simple moving average. Also weakness with the 100 period moving average study and weakness with the 200 period moving average study. Here's the parabolic SAR. This is the weekly chart where we have a dot on top now. And we're going to have to really regain quite a bit of ground to get that back, both on the daily chart and here on the weekly chart. Discretionary to staples, that's the ratio on the bottom where we're just going more or less sideways. It's still in an uptrend, but it's not breaking out. However, it's not breaking down at the same time, but we need this to go up. So the fact that it's going sideways is more negative. Then here's the Dow, which has actually dropped below its 13 week moving average. So that's showing a little bit more weakness. Is this an anomaly or is this a, a, just telling us what's going to happen to the rest of the market? Also, the financial sector. Banks reported earnings on Friday. A lot of the big banks did. The market didn't like what they received. And so we went down and we're falling below the 50-day moving average with the financial sector. Here's a weekly chart of the financial sector. Also falling below. This is a 50-day moving average. Okay, I've got two different charts of the same thing here where they're double. They're, it's just proving my point there. All right. I had to pull from a bunch of different files to get these charts to put them together. And then the last thing is that the dollar is really showing some strength. And as I said before, the stock market likes a weaker dollar. The fact that this is going up, that tends to put pressure on stocks. Thank you. I really hope you found this helpful. Please feel free. If you don't see an update to this video and you think things have changed, I update all of the charts here that I just went through in the daily videos. 
Usually I don't talk about the weekly videos, but if I need to, I will. I'll bring those into the daily videos if things are really developing. If things really shift one way or the other, I may do an update to this video. If not, I won't do this video for another week. So have a great weekend and I will talk to you in the next video.